Welcome everyone to this talk. My name is Esteban Freidel and I am a scientist for process chromatography at Biora Laboratory. Today we will be presenting a case study where high throughput experimentation was using concept with DOE methodology to study the mass recovery of a therapeutic basic protein with a PI of 9.2 to 9.5 using one of our mixed mode resins, more specifically a hydrophobic cation exchange resin. What is high throughput experimentation and what are the advantages of it? HTE is a miniaturized parallel screening format that yields higher experimental throughput, I mean a high number of experiments per resources used, and consumes relatively less amount of, as is often the case, precious sample. HTE is advantageous because it generates a significant amount of data that can then be used to build a more robust manufacturing process, for this tool jives perfectly with process analytical technologies and quality by design approaches, both posted by the FDA and used by the biopharma industry. The schematic presented here depicts a workflow going from HD scale, beginning with the filter plate on the left, to the large scale. Notice that you can perform the HD work on a manual workflow using multi-channel pipettes here on the top, or with the aid of a robotic platform at the bottom. HD can be executed following a systematic experimental approach supported by a design of experiments. The data obtained using the HTE DOE is then analyzed using statistical software package like Jump, Stack Graphics, Design Expert, to construct an experimental design space, shown here. Optimal conditions are then transferred to the small scale column. DOE could also be used at this stage to further optimize the conditions. Finally, the robust method is scaled up. The outline of the talk is presented here. First, the experimental approach follow will be presented. Thereafter, data on uptake kinetics will be discussed, followed by the result of the DOE work. Finally, the talk will be wrapped up with some conclusions. The experimental approach followed is schematically depicted in this block flow diagram. The main part of the experimental work is located here. The first step deals with the loading of the chromatographic media into the filter plate. This can be done using a positive displacement pipette by allowing the media to settle in the tip and then dispense a given volume of settled media into a well. The filter plate can also be loaded using a media dispensing equipment, such as the Media Scout Resiquot from Atoll Bio, used in this work. The plate was loaded with approximately 7.8 microliters of media. The second step in the experimental approach is to determine the incubation time, which is basically the contact time between the protein sample and the media. For a given set of conditions, pH and conductivity, the incubation time will determine the protein load onto the media. These experiments were done at a fixed phase ratio. This number represents the ratio between the liquid phase and the solid phase, settled media, on a given well. Optimal phase ratios lie in the range of 20 to 40. The next step on the approach is to perform a DOE, using the filter plates loaded with the media to define the elution conditions that will lead to the maximum recovery of the protein. And finally, the DOE data was analyzed using JUMP statistical software package. The uptake curve shows the rate of absorption of the protein onto the chromatographic media. The rate of absorption depends not only on the interaction between the protein and the ligand, but also on factors such as the mass transfer, phase ratio, the initial protein bulk concentration, and the operational conditions, pH, ionic strength, mixing intensity. It is important to bear in mind that the binding capacity presented in the figure represents a static binding capacity, which is not to be confused with dynamic binding capacity measured under flow conditions. The figure presented here describes the rate of absorption or the model polypeptide onto the media at a pH of 4.5 and a sodium chloride concentration of 150 millimolar. The uptake data show that the rate of absorption in the batch system for this protein ligand system appears to be level enough at around 60 minutes. The load achieved for this incubation time was around 20 mg per ml media. Finally, Important to point out that the uptake data still suggests that the time to reach equilibrium is longer than 60 minutes. Now, let's go to the DOE. 
DOE is a structured, organized statistical tool that can be used to determine the relationships between different experimental factors and the system responses. DOE was used in this study to assess the effect of the elution conditions, pH and sodium chloride concentration, on the mass recovery, which is a response variable, of the target molecule. The type of DOE used was a full factorial, which provides information about the single effects of each factor on the response variable, as well as effects of interactions between factors on the response variable. To measure the absolute and relative error, the design was replicated and center points were included. It is important to mention that the incubation time was 120 minutes, twice as long as the longest time used during the optic experiment. The time was increased to maximize the protein load. Compared to the data on the, in, the, in the previous slide, the optic curved slide, by doubling the time, the load increased by 1.6 fold, confirming that at 60 minutes, equilibrium was not yet reached. This table lists the experiments performed. The results of these experiments are presented in the next slide. The DOE data show that the mass recovery between 0.80 and 1 is attainable under conditions tested. Now, what is the dependence of the mass recovery on the elution pH and sodium chloride elution concentration? To address this question, let us analyze the data first using a linear model. The model presented here is a linear model that accounts for the main effects, which are the effect of elution pH and elution sodium chloride, and the interaction effect. The parity plot presents the correlation between the predicted and measured values for the recovery. The dashed lines in, on, to, on the plot represent the upper and lower 95% confidence interval. From the parity plot, it can be seen that the model partially explains the variability of the experimental data, as a significant number of points fall out of the confidence interval. Despite the low predictability, from the parameter estimates table, it can be seen that statistically, the effect of pH on the variability of the recovery is less compared to the effect of the sodium chloride elution concentration, as the effect of the former has a significance higher than 0.05. To visualize the dependence of the recovery on each of the experimental factors, let's take a look at the profiler results. The figure shows the predicted response on the y-axis and the main effects on the x-axis, which are the elution pH and elution sodium chloride concentration. The blue dashed line represents the 95% confidence interval, and the red dashed line represents the predicted recovery at the corresponding value of the elution pH and the elution sodium chloride. The purple triangle represents the sensitivity of the recovery on a given experimental factor. From this figure, it can be seen that changes in the elution pH will result in negligible changes in the response variable. Conversely, changes in the elution sodium chloride concentration translate into significant changes on the recovery. In terms of the sensitivity of the recovery on the experimental factors, it is evident that the recovery is more sensitive to changes in the elution sodium chloride concentration, as the area of the sensitivity triangle is much higher than that of the sensitivity triangle corresponding to the elution pH. Finally, it is worth pointing out that the recovery is positively correlated with the elution sodium chloride. Returning to the issue of the model predictability, can it be improved? The answer to that question is yes. The predictability of the model significantly improves by accounting for the quadratic effect of the sodium chloride. This new model still shows that the elution pH has statistically a marginal effect. Hence, the model can be further simplified. This simplified model makes it obvious that recovery is related to the elution sodium chloride concentration in a non-linear manner, meaning that the recovery will level off at higher salt concentrations. Lastly, an important piece of information that it is used for process robustness is the operating window. This slide presents the operating windows based both on the experimental data and on the improved model. From this window, one could define the operational ranges for the experimental parameters that will keep the target process indicator, in this case mass recovery, within the target range. And now, this takes us to the conclusion. A mass recovery of protein D from the resin of up to 100% is attainable. 
Sodium chloride has a more pronounced effect on the variability of the mass recovery compared to the elution pH. The strong effect of the elution salt concentration suggests that the interaction between the model molecule used and the media is primarily ionic in nature. A plausible explanation as for why the elution pH did not play a significant role in this case might reside in the shape of the titration curve of the model molecule. One could conceive a scenario where the titration curve flattens out as the pH approaches the pH of the molecule, which means the molecule will not gain enough positive charges on its surface to cause electrostatic repulsion, leading to a decrease in the mass recovery. The effect of the elution sodium chloride concentration is positively correlated with the recovery, implying that high NaCl yields a high recovery. A nonlinear model that considers the quadratic effect of the elution sodium chloride explains fully the variability of the experimental data. And finally, binding kinetics showed that for the model molecule to approach equilibrium with this mixed mode media requires a batch incubation time longer than 60 minutes at a pH of 4.5 in 40 millimolar sodium acetate and 150 millimolar sodium chloride. Once again, my name is Esteban Freider. Thank you for your time and I hope that it has become clear on how to apply DOE methodology to obtain HTE data. Now I would like to invite you to visit our website www.biorad.com nuvia for more information. Thank you.